I want to first uh, thank you for your time and then I would like to start with uh, when you were starting your speech you said some of the ideas that you implemented in uh, Malawi about one cow per family. You said how our president inspired you. I would like for you to elaborate on that. I have uh, followed the President Kagame's uh, visionary leadership for a long time. But I must also confess that uh, I've had an opportunity to get close to meet him because his wife and I belong to one prayer group. So because I was watching what he was doing for his people here, I didn't even know I was then going to become president. And suddenly I become president, I remembered Rwanda. So uh, I worked with some people who were working here as well. So there are three projects at least that I copied from here, that I borrowed from here. One is the Kawa family project. Two is by buying a casa, the, the, the building of rural housing. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is one acre fund. Okay. Yeah, so, the, and those, those are projects that, he, even then my detractors in Malawi, my enemies in Malawi were saying she's wasting time, she's giving out cows. But now I built the roads, I built the water tanks, I built the bigger projects, I added the, uh, more electricity to the grid. But today, if you ask every Malawian, they will say, oh, she built houses. That is, this, what they remember are those three projects. So, so, so for me, I'll forever be grateful. And I've had the opportunity to come back. Two years ago, I came back for about uh, 10 days because Madam uh, First Lady invited me, uh, 14 of us from our prayer group. We have a prayer group yeah. globally. Yeah. Uh, as a leader who defends women and their rights, what is needed to further promote women's leadership in Africa? I think what, what must happen is uh, we must engage our male leaders on the continent. And some of us have reached a stage where we can knock on, the, on their doors on behalf of other women. Because our African men are keen to support, but it, we must have our own style of contact, uh, dialogue. We must respect our male leaders. We must engage them instead of confronting them or abusing them. We must engage them and have discussions with them about what is what is needful to do in, on the continent. So um, there's so much that needs to be done still, but I, my opinion is that we're making progress. So what is your message to a young African woman today? Both, both young and old. Yes. For young women, I must uh, advise to be persistent. It's not going to be an easy ride, but they must always know that somebody has to do it. So they cannot say, oh, I cannot stand for elected office because I'll be abused. No then we, sh we are losing out. What we are losing out is you women who are professional, you are refusing to join politics because of the abuse, because of the scandalization, because of the name calling. But at the end of the day, it is now any ordinary woman coming to, to take that seat in parliament, and then people say the quality is low. But yes, quality has been affected because you are scared, because you are chickening out. What we need to do is to stand strong as women, take any risk that is required, Join politics, even as professional women, because at the end of the day, you go to parliament and then you have, you have a woman of substance and you can uh, contribute properly. Is there anything else you would like to add or any message you'd like to give to Rwandan people before we finish? You know, yes, uh, what I would like to say to Rwandan people is that what they see here should not be taken for granted. It's not happening everywhere else. And for me, it's good to be back and to eat the, uh, in Malawi, we call it uh, sukali, but the, the short bananas. I love them. I came here yesterday. That was the first thing I looked for. And then <laughs> the tilapia and the, the, the cassava uh, ugali. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>